Guys, this is Mobin. We are talking about the pathologies of the pulmonary system. The disease is the bronchiectasis that we are discussing. The definition of the bronchiectasis is chronic permanent dilatation of the bronchi and the bronchioles due to or associated with chronic infections that cause destruction of the airway walls. So, that is a dis the definition. This is irreversible disease and normally obstruction and infection are present together. It is possible that infection appears first and that causes pus formation which results in the obstruction of the pathways due to the pus or the inflammatory exudate and then causes the bronchiectasis or it is possible that there is obstruction first that leads to stagnation of the airways which causes infection, which causes inflammation, which causes destruction of the airways. But these two things are present together always obstruction and infection. So, now let us see after the definition epidemiology important from steps point of view. In the United States, the most common cause of cystic of the bronchiectasis in United States, the most common cause of bronchiectasis is cystic fibrosis. Worldwide, the most common cause of bronchiectasis is tuberculosis. So, keep that in mind. From a pathogenesis point of view, what causes, what is the pathological mechanism? Here is what happens. Remember this, at the end of the day, there is going to be infectious process. There are going to be infections. Infections will lead to inflammation. Inflammation will cause local tissue destruction causing exudate plus destruction, tissue destruction. Now, this destruction will mean dilatation. However, exudate will cause obstruction. This obstruction will increase infections so that this process continues to occur till we reach this branch and reach the dilatations which is the bronchiectasis. Now, let us start with the cystic fibrosis, the very first one. All of these diseases are going to end up with the infection causing destruction. Cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is a disease primarily of Caucasians. Again, as I said, most common in the United States. Unfortunately, the disease progress is such that by 30 years of age, patients have actually died because of respiratory failure or heart failure due to the respiratory failure, core pulmonale. What happens in the cystic fibrosis is following. So, if we come here, I will make that over here for a second. In the cystic fibrosis, let us say this is a normal cell, the cell which is the, which is making the lining of the respiratory system or lining of other mucosal membranes. So, this can affect the GIT respiration and other systems too. This is a cell the cell has chloride proteins, chloride channels, which allow the chloride to go out and allows the sodium to come in. And you know that when sodium comes in, water also comes in, right. Now, if this cell, which allows this chloride to go out, and sodium and water to come in. If you pick up this cell and put that over here and imagine that this is a chloride channel and this is sodium, let us call it half and half, sodium and water channel. Normally, what would happen is chloride would be secreted, sodium and water will be reabsorbed and there will be an eventual layer of secretion that will be formed here, right. So, this is the normal moist layer. Now, we also know that these cells have gotten cilia, 
all cells have gotten cilia here, these cilias will keep beating and keep moving this layer, the moisture layer upwards till we expectorate it. So, we either swallow it or we throw it out as phlegm. What is the benefit of this moist layer? The pathogens, the allergens, the dust, the smoke, such things get trapped over here. So, it is important for us, for us humans and other animals to clear the bronchial pathways by using this mucociliary elevators or escalators. Now, what happens is when there is a problem with the cystic fibrosis, we call CFTR gene. When this gene has a mutation that causes this chloride channel to become defective, this protein to become defective and chloride extrusion stops. So, when that stops, chloride stays in the cell. Also, the sodium reabsorption and water reabsorption increases. So, think about it now what would happen is ions are not going out which will trap the water, chloride is not going out, but more ions are coming in and water is coming in or is reabsorbed from the lumen. The result of that is that this is isotonic fluid, I said isotonic fluid. When CFTR is present, the sweat will become hypertonic. We will discuss that in the CFTR lecture or cystic fibrosis lecture. Here please remember the this secretion here is isotonic because sodium and water both are reabsorbed. However, the problem is that this secretion has now become become thick. Why? Because of the extra reabsorption of water and sodium. This thick viscous V I S C U S I believe viscous or C O U S C O U S this thick viscous secretion here becomes an obstruction for the mucociliary elevator to work properly. Cilia are cannot easily move this thick secretion up towards the towards the upper pathways. This then causes stagnation in this area. It would cause then the thick thing to start obstructing here, number one. Number two, there will be of course infections that would start, inflammatory process would start because there is all the junk that was coming in is trapped in here. So, that is what happens with this CFTR. That is the most common cause of the hereditary problems, cause of death due to hereditary problems in United States in Caucasians. 98 percent of the people with the bronchiectasis due to CFTR are Caucasians. Okay, so, this is one. Then is the chronic infections. 